And good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Saturday. Welcome to the Retro 8-Bit stream <laughs> with my trusty ZX Spectrum emulator. Um, I am still working on getting my ZX Spectrum working, 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 uh, which it is, but I haven't got a television I can plug it into without modifying it, and I haven't got around to having time to do uh, modification. I'd see there's already been some discussion on the chat about the spec, the, the, um, the capability of the original game. So, um, Webgear, no, the original Elite. You cannot change your ship. You you are stuck uh, in the Cobra Mark III. Such capabilities are beyond imagination at this point in the game. <laughs> there wasn't enough memory to cope with that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, in the original game. So now, uh, and it was modified. Okay, so I may check into. I've I found these modified versions of the original game for uh, for the Spectrum online. So we may take a look at some of those given time. But yeah, we have a mission. We have a mission on the original Elite, which is to trigger the missions. Oddly enough. <laughs> <laughs> to um to, uh, to 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 capture them for posterity the original game so no i still haven't found the badge um i <laughs> venturing into the attic is is something that requires quite a lot of planning winnie <laughs> because of the because of the way the attic is shall i say organized and i use the word organized advisedly <laughs> um so yeah so the, there we go so <laughs> Yes, it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun, fun, fun. Um, anyway, hello to everybody on the stream. Um, Kelvinator, Winnie, Webgear, um, Commander Ariok, uh, Man vs. Gaming 101. Hello, good to see you. Thank you very much for popping along. So this is the original game. Not on the original platform, I hasten to add. Um, it is the original game. Um, and there we are. This is where... <laughs> this, is, this is it. Right, hang on a minute. Press the right button. There we go. This is it. Look at that. <laughs> is it murder and pillage again? Yes, it is. We are. We have to go on our, our trick. Is it, is it more murder and pillage? Yes, it is. Uh, we've reached the state of the game, whereby if I can just get this is this is this is who we are. We are Commander Jameson. Okay, we are Commander Jameson. We have we have done some murdering and pillaging up until now, and we are currently an offender. We <laughs> seem to have been forgiven some of our crimes, um, and our rating is competent. Okay, now to put that into perspective. Um, and we have kind of lasered our way across the galaxy. We're actually in the middle of the galaxy now. We did start off over here, and now we're, now we're here, which is actually in the worst, one of the worst systems in the game called um, SotaQ. Now I'm going to actually head up here to what I used to regard as my home base when I played this game. Okay, so up here is a planet called TNV, which is actually quite handy because uh, not that one, it's that one. No, uh, it's in there somewhere. Tembe, there it is. Uh, so it's currently 50 light years away, but it's quite a good system because it's safe and it's got a high tech level. Okay, so that was that was my home world, if you like, in the original game. So I'm going to go there as just because you know nostalgia, right? Um, so I'm going to go. There. It's got blue bony felines as a, as a population, <laughs> for, uh, which is a bit weird. 5.9 billion cats, um, and uh, but it's it's a long way off, so we need to get up there um, uh, and kind of work our way across the chart. Um, now let's just put this in context where we are with um, the progress of the game. So we've got a bit of money. We've got quite a decent ship now, okay? Uh, we have a large cargo bay, which can, means we can carry 35 tons of cargo. We've got fuel scoops, which means we can absorb, we can carry, we pick up cargo and we can refuel the ship. We've got an ECM system, which stops enemy missiles, an energy unit, which allows us to recharge the ship faster, docking computers, which saves us a lot of time. Front military laser is the best gun that we can get on the front of the ship. And we have a rear mining laser in case we encounter an asteroid and we fancy shooting it up to get some minerals, but it's not very profitable to be honest. So um, the, the best way to make profits in this game is trading. Um, oddly enough, it's quite well balanced actually. So it is, um, uh, you know, it does give the option, you know, piracy does pay quite well. Um, shooting bad ships does pay quite well, actually not so well, um, but it does give you your rating. So that's quite good. Trading is the most profitable way in the game and you can mine, but it's um, it's safe and it's dull and it doesn't pay me much money in the original game. So, um, but we've, we've got, we, we have a, um, yeah, Commander Kelvinator, it's, it's, we're almost at an iron ass, right? <laughs> one of my friends, um, uh, one of my American friends, um, uh, Glenn has has sent me. I haven't used them yet. Has sent me some MP3s because because you know that the the British people can't say ass properly. <laughs> it just doesn't come naturally to us at all. So saying you know in the original law of elite, uh, a, a hardened ship is called um, um, an iron ass. <laughs> British people can't say ass in the, in the sense that Americans mean it, which is you know that's 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 a tough ass, right? <laughs> 
we can't do it. So we say arse, which just doesn't work. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, I, I have to I have to get the Americans to do an ass for me. So I've, I've got some MP3 recordings. So when we get there, I'm going to use them with Glenn's permission. <laughs> Hope he'll be on the stream at some point. <laughs> so that's that's where we've got to now. Let, let me just explain the progress on the original game. I'm just going to fire up a web browser here just briefly because uh, I can't remember the numbers. Um, um, right. OK. Elite rankings. Here we go. So the number of kills we have in this early version of the game is if we've got zero kills, we're harmless. OK. If we kill eight things, we become mostly harmless. Uh, if we're at 16 kills, you can see it's an 8-bit increment, right? 16 kills, we get poor. 32, we get average. Above average is 64. And competent means we've killed 128 um, ships. Um, dangerous is the next ranking up. But we have to kill 512 ships to get to dangerous. Um, to get to deadly, we need to have reached 2,560 kills. And to get to elite in this game we need to have killed more than 6,400 ships. That's how the rankings work. So they're sort of exponential, okay? They're sort of exponential. So we've got to competent, which is actually the sixth rank up. There's only three ranks to go, but we're nowhere near even a quarter of the way. <laughs> we have, we're not even a sixth. In fact, we're about a, um, if, we're, if I do 128 over, over that number, I can't do that in my head, apologies. My maths is appalling nowadays. Where's the calculator? There we go. Um, six uh, divided by, there we go. We are we are one fiftieth of the way to elite. Okay, at the moment, <laughs> that's as far as we've got. So whilst it looks reasonably impressive that we got to competent, it isn't. Okay, um, so we have to do a lot of killing in the original to get to elite. So that's why. Um, uh, thing. Now, on the way to dangerous. Now this is this is thing to look at. We don't know. We can't work out from the screen exactly how many kills we've had. All we know at this point is we've gone past. 128. Um, every 256 kills on the 8-bit version of the game, you get a message on the screen which says, right on commander, which is where that phrase comes from. Okay, So right on commander is every 256 kills you get, um, you get that message. That's where it comes from. Okay, <laughs> We haven't seen that yet because we haven't had 256 kills. So that's, in this case, that's halfway to the dangerous rank. So when we get the second right on commander, it means we're dangerous. Um, and, and there we go. So that's that's what we're looking for. Okay. <laughs> um, now, rumor has it, and I haven't I haven't been able to confirm this, but rumor has it that the second one, the first mission on the spectrum is triggered um, when you when when there are three things: competent, which we've got. Uh, when we've also got a galactic hyperspace drive, which we haven't got yet, um, and we're in Galaxy 2, which means we have to have gone there using a galactic hyperspace drive and um, and then bought another one, I think. So the, the objective really at the moment is to... is to, I want to go to Tianbei today and just hack and stalter my way across the graph, partly to keep improving the rating, partly to do the numbers, uh, and partly ultimately to get that galactic hyperspace jump. Once we've arrived at Tianbei, then we will see if we can galactic hyperspace jump into chart two and push onwards to see if we can trigger the mission. That's that's kind of the plan, okay? So um, as as plans go, that's 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 the plan. Um, so we're now in the SOTAQ system. So we need to refuel for a start, so let's do that. Um, beep. The sound effects, as you know, are awesome in this game. Right, we've got 4,500 credits, which isn't enough well, we can't buy it here anyway, but it isn't enough to, to do anything. So let's have a quick look. What is SOTAQ? SOTAQ is an anarchy and it's agricultural. So um, where's somewhere we can go? That's rich industrial. So that's actually probably worth us buying some cheap food, one would hope. Let's have a look at the market prices here. Oops, don't want to do that. Uh, which is the, no, not that key. Which key is it? Uh, I've forgotten, does anybody remember? <laughs> What's the key for the market price? There it is. Um, right, so what have we got here? We've got liquor and wines look pretty cheap here. So let's buy some of them. Uh, no, 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 no. Right, there we go. Right, I'm going to go down, buy some. Oh, I've gone past it. <laughs> it's an amazing UI, right? Liquor and wines, right? So 35 tons of 
liquor and wines at 22.8 credits. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Um, okay, so correct. So, uh, do you think there's any value in getting allied with the minor factions in Elite? Elite Dangerous sounds to me like a journey everyone must travel for themselves. Ah, well, we'll, we'll talk about that next week. Far. Um, Philly, <laughs> I can't pronounce your name at all. Philly Redos. Philly, Red, Philly, Philly Red 05. There we go, that'll do. Um, then, um, uh, well, um, possibly I don't I don't really know but we're going to be talking about Raxler and Raxler related things along the way okay so that's for the next week so heading up towards the top right corner of Galactic Chart 1 and we're just going to slaughter our way through now we're going to do some 80s nostalgia on the way because that was quite popular last um, last week as well so the little bit of 80s nostalgia last week we were talking about radio cassettes <laughs> and dubbing cassettes that was quite good fun so um, I was going to think about this week talking about um, some of the stuff that was on the telly and in the cinemas of course in the era where this game was being played, but let's 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 get on on our way, shall we? Um, and that we come from the space. I'm just going to close my window. I can hear somebody mowing their lawn. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, but it was annoying me. <laughs> this mic is actually quite sensitive. So um, there we go. Right. So um, let me get rid of the mouse. Hyperspace. Ho to Oost <laughs> Oost or something. <laughs> Thank you for hosting the scream, uh, scream, ah, uh, stream there from Gangrel EU. Appreciate that. That's very kind of you. Right. So this um, is a rich industrial. Now, with a bit of luck, our liquor and wines were 10, 10, 10, 15 credits more. Okay. So that's that's made the trip worthwhile, right? Um, so let's get the ship in. So yeah. So um, again, just a little bit of introduction. This is the original 8-bit version of Elite on not the original platform this is on the zx spectrum which was an 8-bit computer of the era um, um sat alongside the bbc um uh you know at, at the time um the original B elite elite came out on the bbc as an exclusive originally uh, and it was ported to other computers at the time and this is one of those ports um, i'm showing this one because this is the one i grew up with <laughs> this is my elite okay so I spent years as a teenager literally years um, uh, playing this game okay and I played it because it, it was it, yeah it was the best space game out um, you know to be fair it was it was brilliant um, and as you can see I'm going to be murdering and hacking my way through <laughs> uh, here uh, I want that kill count. I want that right on commander. And you can see this uber weapon that I've got is is very good. Oh, now that one's a bit tricky. This is a bit close to the space station, so I need to be a bit careful here. Uh, I don't really want the space station to see me coming. Oh, kudos to that guy. He actually got a shot back. There we go. And I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, did the Spectrum version have lens lock? Yes, it did. Would you like to see a lens lock? I have got one. Hang on a minute. Um, this is, I've, I've shown this many times. I, I, should, I should keep it out next to me for this stream, right? This is the original box, okay? Let me just switch the camera. There we go. Uh, switch the camera. Uh, there you go. That's the, this is the original box for the ZX Spectrum. And inside here, you have, you have, a, you have a book. You have, uh, you have the manual. Um, which is all very exciting. I have the Spectrum Plus keyboard overlay. Look at that. Very, very cool. Never used that because I never had a Spectrum Plus. I also have the My Spectrum keyboard overlay, which actually fitted over the computer, which tells you all the all the controls, right? So there you go. That's 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 what you have to press to do stuff. Um, and then you also get an instruction manual, another piece of instruction, telling you how to use the lens lock. <laughs> and... Um, there's also this. This is rather nice. A ship recognition chart. Okay, so it tells you what all the ships look like. Because yes, they're all. Apologies, there's a bit of glare there because of the camera and the um, the green screen. But uh, you can sort of see all the different types of um, ships that you're going to encounter in the game and what they look like. And they all look like you know low res things, right? Because it's an eight bit game. Um, but this device here, that that this is a lens lock. I don't know if you can see that too well. Um, there we go. Focusing up. And this is it's like a prismatic piece of glass. Uh, plastic actually and uh, you'd fold it on your screen like so and look through it and it would distort what was on the screen um, so you could read letters through it and uh, that's that that was the DRM for the system 
<laughs> if you didn't have the lens lock, you couldn't read the screen, so you couldn't get the game to start. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the um, yeah that that was um, yeah that, yeah that, that, there's that. Okay, All right. So how to how to use it. <laughs> Um, lens lock instructions for use. This quality program is protected by lens lock. <laughs> um, and that's all the, yeah, all the stuff. There's, there's loads of it, there's loads of it, which was quite, quite cool. It all came in the original box. And that's what the original box inside looked like. So I won't limit you to get there. There's your lens lock sits at the top. And there's the cassette, right? There's the cassette. Remember cassettes? Um, there's the cassette of Elite. Let me just pop that out for you. Um, there you go. Can you see that? Um, now you'll notice it says Spectrum 48K load, ditto, ditto, Ian Bell and David Braben, conversion by Taurus. Um, and it's exactly the same, so it would appear, on the B side, right? They, they, they look identical. Now, um, I've mentioned it on the stream before, but there's a little thing that some of you ZX Spectrum players may not know about this. Is that if you loaded the game on one side, you would get adders um, attacking you. And if you loaded the game from the other side, he says, having just turned it around, you would get crates. You would never ever, and those of you who played on the Spectrum may, may recall this now, you never ever got crates and adders in the same game. Never ever got crates and adders in the same game. That's because there were two versions, one on each side of the cassette. One with crates and one with adders. <laughs> and that was quite handy to know early on in the game because crates didn't fire missiles and adders did. So actually what you tended to do is you would, if you load the cassette with the crate side, once you'd figured out which side it was, because it didn't tell you of course, that was one of the things you had to find out. Um, if you, you loaded the crate side, it was slightly safer than the other side because adders fired missiles at you and crates didn't. So there you go. There's a little tip bit. Commander Sinclair didn't know that, so he's learned something after all these years about the original game. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> um, but yeah, there wasn't enough memory to have all the ships in, so they, they gave you two versions of the game on either side of the cassette, but it was an undocumented feature, um, which not a lot of people knew about. So, so there you go, there you go. <laughs> right, so let's sell our... Okay, now we're fugitive again, okay, so we're bad boys, right? We're bad boys, because we murdered some ships on the way in. Um, 35 tons of that. That gives us now we've got enough money to buy the um, galactic hyperspace. Um, I don't know if other 8 bit versions were the same. No, I, I think that's a Spectrum only thing, as far as I recall. I don't, um, because, the, because the Spectrum version was a conversion by Taurus, it wasn't written by Ian Bell and David Braben, it wasn't a port in the classic sense like the C64 version was. Um, and all the 8 bit var variations had you know differences in them they all implemented it in a slightly different way um for example the commodore 64 version had the trumbles which were little creatures that floated around the screen and ate your cargo um, and that's because it had the hardware to do sprites which none of the other computers had um so that's that's one of the reasons okay um and members i don't think members are in the spectrum version or are they i don't know somebody somebody tell me i can't i don't think we've seen one yet if so but i can't remember um in the law, Mambas were the replacement for the crate. The crate was an old ship and the Mamba was a funky new one. Um, now that's what we want, the galactic hyperspace, right? But I'm not going to buy it yet because well, that'll get us right out of cash. We need to do a bit more cash. So we, we are now in a rich industrial place. Uh, that probably means that computers are cheap, which they are. We can buy those. So let's trade along the way and shoot stuff. I think that's going to be the most profitable way to, to do things. Um, and what we really want is a poor agricultural system along the way. See what we can find. Mainly agricultural, not bad. Uh, that one is rich industrial, that's no good at all. Herbity is rich industrial, mm, not very good. Um, rich agricultural, that's a bit further in that direction. That is rich agricultural, so this isn't ideal at all really. Let's go there, which hmm. I think out of those destinations, the best one's going to be Zazor. No, which one was it? One of these, mainly agricultural. Let's go there, okay? It's relatively low tech, so mainly agricultural, so it's not going to be the best price, but it'll be a, a reasonable case. Um, 
So for one of the platforms, I get the, apparently the first set of lens locks for Elite didn't work. I can't remember that. Yeah, I vaguely remember that, a Gangrel, something about that at the time. Um, Zades. Now, there's a name I haven't heard for a long time. Yes, that was a relatively famous system, wasn't it? What was that one about? Multi-government. Yeah, so that's no good to us either. Let's go to Zier. That sounds like a quite a cool place, doesn't it? Um, oh, save. Don't forget to save, Drew. I must, must, <laughs> must make sure I do that. Very important. Um, now, you, you may think, hang on, he's cheating, he's saving everywhere. No, actually, that was a mechanic on the original game where you could save your position. This is obviously a single-player game, right? So um, um, we can legitimately save our, our position along the way. Technically, I can only save in space stations, um, but um, yeah, that is uh, um, yeah, something that the emulator gives me. So let's murder and pillage our way into the space station. Um, and uh, keep trugging on. So there we go. <laughs> Hopefully this is an asteroid, not an anaconda. Oop, got that angle wrong. Yep, it was. Uh, asteroids are worth shooting because they count as a kill, okay? You only get half a credit for killing them, but they do count as a kill, so it's always worth taking out the asteroids along the way. Um, you know, it counts to our 6,400 that we've got to get to to get to elite. Um, I do hope that at some point we'll get our right on commander because that means that we're halfway to dangerous. <laughs> but you can see that the military laser pretty much gives me impu. Oh, this will be a Viper um, attacking me here. This is a police ship. It opened fire on me and it's clean. As you can see it's no match for me. Um, and there we go. <laughs> The space station is, um, it's nice being able to save off you hit logs. Yeah, that's that's sort of cheating a little bit because obviously you can't really do that in the original game. But there we go, we've made some money. Um, right, we are now in, uh, where are we now? We are in Zier. Right, this is a mainly agricultural, so that should mean that liquor and wines are relatively cheap. They're 30. There's only 29 tons available, but we can buy that. Um, 29 tons. At 30 credits, luxuries, mm, let's just, actually what I'll do, I'll leave the rest of the cargo space free for the moment. Um, and we want a nice rich, not rich agricultural, Edorte. What's that one like? That one's a corporate, that's rich agricultural, it's all agricultural around here. Um, rich industrial, perfect. Okay, we're not making quite the progress we'd like, but that's good. Right, save again. <laughs> um, and onwards we go. Um, it is nice to be able to save. Um, okay, that's fantastic. Right, so hyperspace. And off we go. There's amazing sound effects. And oh, we come out, we can't even see the planet. Now what we could do, of course, we could, we could take some trips into Thargoid space and um, get some credits that way. That's not a bad way because every Thargoid we encounter is um, worth 50 if we kill it. Plus we can also sell the... That's a Viper coming in. Oh, I've lost that missile, that one. And now what we can do here, this is, this is very dodgy, but we can scoop up the cargo and it becomes some slaves. <laughs> um, which just, just shows you the morals of this game, okay? It's very anarchic, I like it. Um, it's one thing I've always liked about the universe of Elite is it's, you know, um, if you scoop up an escape pod, it turns the occupants into slaves and presumably you sell them into a life of destitution. So <laughs> um, that's always appealed to me. Um, always in my head, you know, as I was thinking of stories as a young kid, I say, well, maybe I rescue, you know, maybe some of the slaves I scoop, I go and inspect to see who they are. And uh, maybe I set them free if, if I'm in a good mood, you know. So um, that's not an option the game gives you, unfortunately. But it's the sort of thing that was kind of going on in my head as I was playing it. Now that's a Cobra Mark III, another trading vessel, which I'm just going to, you know, unfortunately slaughter out of the way. On my way to fight. Yeah, I'm now a, um, I'm now a desperate pirate. Now it's actually left behind some cargo, which is worth a scooping up. So let's do that. So this is another way, basically, you would pirate your way around and scoop up cargo. Well, that's only food, that's a bit that's a bit dull. There's a pirate just deciding to have a pop at us somewhere off the edge, there it is, on the edge of the scanner. Um, 
it's quite nice when you get a pirate right twins because it kind of improves your rating a little bit. So this is also a Cobra Mark III, but this is a bad one. Uh, there we go, so attacking us first. He's probably thinking, oops, I'm just... There we go, I can see him back. Picked the wrong guy today. <laughs> uh, that's probably some cargo. He's, he's been dropping cargo as well. Let's scoop that up. There we go. Narcotics, nice. Okay, highly illegal, but um, worth us having. And with a bit of luck, I can get the space station. There we go. Um, also on the specy chart, transporters, gecko, moro, shuttle, and adder. Um, yeah, so transporters, gecko, moro, and the shuttle definitely weren't in the spectrum, but the the adder was. The adder was, but you have to load the right side of the cassette. <laughs> uh, is there any way to see if the canister is worth scooping? No, there's no way to identify the scanner, the, the contents of the cargo before you scoop it up. That's one thing that was a little bit irritating actually, because um, you could, um, so we can sell our narcotics, uh, you could um, become an offender, if, even if you played the game in a clean style. If you shot another ship, um, a pirate, and scooped its cargo up, you always ran the risk of picking up something illegal, like narcotics, slaves, or um, what else was there? Um, narcotics were illegal. Firearms were illegal in some locales. Um, I think it was those two. And slaves, of course. So those three were, were illegal. And um, you could harm your clean rating by effectively smuggling because you'd accidentally pick something up. <laughs> um, so murder, pillage, drug running, slave trade, anything missing is liquor, and that covers bootlegging. So, yeah, so <laughs> you can't identify what you're about to pick up before you pick it up, which, you know, did force you occasionally into a life of crime, okay? Because what would happen is you'd become an offender um, and then the police would, would attack you. And then you, you either had to run away or defend yourself. Of course, if you defended yourself, then you'd fired on a police ship and then you got into... So the game kind of, you know, did, did play with your morals quite well. It was, that, was, that was quite good. Um, right, so we now there. Um, how much did we sell those, the cure for? Not, we didn't make much profit on it, but we made some. Right, so this is rich industrial. That should mean that computers are relatively cheap here. And there's 57 tons. Let's buy those. That's definitely good. And we'll just continue our uh, 35 tons of that. Yes, thank you very much. And we will go, where are we going to go? Right, uh, this this place is rich industrial. So we want, a, rich agricultural isn't bad. Um, and that gets us off to these places. So what's these one? That's Arexia, that's rich industrial. As long as you can, generally, as long as you can go from agricultural to industrial, you will make some cash along the way. So that's that's quite useful. We're gonna have a bit of a problem in the next one. So let's see how we do. Uh, save. <laughs> um, and onwards, onwards we go. Alien items. Oh, alien items were illegal, were they? Some versions that you just sent dodge your cargo. Yeah, you can't do that um, on this version of Elite. Um, at least I don't think you can. Uh, same thing happens with the sort of, sort of does. Yeah, you know what they say. I've better be hung for a sheep than a lamb. Yeah, so exactly. <laughs> so if you're going to go down, you might as well be a bad guy. So I don't know what I am now. Am I, am I still a fugitive? Yes, so I'm still very, very bad. The game thinks I'm very, very bad, uh, which is cool. Now, um, it's... Just to go back to the 80s for a moment, the context of this game, because this game has come out in 1984. Um, I am, at that point, I'm a, th and I, I played it on the BBC briefly because a friend of mine had it, um, but I didn't play it properly until it came out on the ZX Spectrum, which was 1985. So I was then 14 uh, as a teenager. Um, so very impressionable age to be playing this. Sort of stuff, so you've got to see why this game is stuck with me after all that time. Um, and it feels like an old pair of shoes playing it now, you know, really comfortable. I know exactly why I'm now, exactly what's going to happen. Um, although I, hope I did, I did, I did get a few things wrong last week, got killed twice once by the police and once by the Thargoid. Um, but um, it's, it's very familiar, and I'm, I'm very comfortable with it because I just know I know exactly what to play. Here comes this is an asp. Um, which is one of the slightly tougher ships in the sense that it can outrun you if it wants to. Let's pick him up and sell him into a life. Oh, I can't pick him up, can I? My cargo hold is full. Yeah, so that's... We'll just ignore that. Um, so yeah, so this, this game's come out when I'm 14. Now, 
back in the 70s, in 19, is it 77 the original Star Wars came out? I think it's 1977, A New Hope, episode four, of course, a bit, a bit confusing. Um, kill the escape, I could, have, I could have shot the escape pod down, that would just be bad. Yeah, I'll do that next time. <laughs> no, that will cement my, uh, was it 79? I thought it was 77. Um, 78, <laughs> okay, it was 78. Um, that is a pirate. Uh, anyway, it was late 70s. Um, and I remember um, going to see it. I was, if it was, 77 was New Hope, so um, I, it was definitely 70s. Um, like there's, there's the, oh, that's just the, uh, that's just the thing. I don't get credited for killing the cargo, unfortunately. Um, right, now here's, here's the game again. Um, coming up on me, it's, it's now bracketed me with four ships. So that's, that's, Upping the values. The two ships here. These are probably sidewinders or crates, in my experience. Um, this version of the game that I've got appears to be the crate version. I haven't seen an adder in it. I don't expect to see an adder in it. It'll be always be crates or um, um, sidewinders in this configuration. Uh, two crates, in fact. One down. Oh, and I shot the escape pod. Right. Slam on the brakes. Get the other one if I can before we bank it away. Yes. Nice. Right. That means I've got their mouth the way before the other two ships are trying to bracket me from behind can get their guns to bear, which is a sidewinder. Now sidewinders are actually quite annoying in this game because they do have a missile, and they're very fast and manoeuvrable. They're more manoeuvrable than you are, and they're faster. So they are, oddly enough, a slightly more challenging ship in some ways because they can outrun you and outturn you which is a bit irritating <laughs> and they're really small um, in the original elite this is a ship that can't have a hyperdrive fitted to it it's too small um, which does make it um, oh that's another crate there we go It's not very strong. The crate is a, an old fighter in the original war, and it's not very good. So there we go. A band of desperate pirates, <laughs> completely pulverized by my overwhelming, amazing powers behind the keyboard. Um, so yeah, so that, that's that. That was a that was a that was a better pirate attack. The Spectrum version did up the um, the difficulties um, over time. Right, we got to the space station. That's good. Um, aliens here. Hey, good to see you. Hello. Thank you very much for turning up. Um, New Galaxy gives you a clean status. Uh, okay. Oh, and Crash is here. Hello, Crash. Good to see you. I'm, we're playing very much the um, yeah uh, uh, favourite of your era, I'm sure. So you can join me in, in giving me advice on, on where we're getting. We're, we're doing all right, actually. We're doing all right. So um, Crash should be known to you. He was the guy, if you, if you don't know Crash, Crash was the guy who um, invented the Elite Dangerous phrases, uh, phrase, um, I bring friends. <laughs> and he was the guy who, at the launch event, which was when, which were you, was that 20, uh, 2015? I forget now, 2014, I can't remember now. Um, um, and he, he was, yeah, he, he, he basically flew the ship and did stuff at the launch event and was on screen and December 2014 there we go that's when it was when Elite Dangerous actually launched and a whole bunch of us got to go to this party that Frontier and organized which was very cool um, and Karash did this did this thing on 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 um, uh, you know with, with a big screen at the event and he flew around and he shot the bad guys actually I think he was flying as the Federation and he shot up the Empire ships which I, I disapproved of heartily of course so <laughs> Um, and Crash is definitely Mr. Squee. He used to squee. Hashtag squee was a thing uh, back in the day. So there we go. Um, lovely to have you along, my friend. Lovely to have you along. Um, so, right. So where have we got to? So I've been murdering and slaughtering my way through the chart. We are. We're now, we're now up there. So we're getting there. Um, and now we're in a place where we're not going to make much of a profit going anywhere. So because the systems are the same and they're just within range. Let's Let's just go there. And we'll we'll pick up some cargo along the way. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's good. And um, I'm I'm think I'm right in saying, Crash, that you were you were a Spectrum man um, as well. Is that is that is that right? Were you a Spectrum or were you a you were one of those posh kids with a BBC or a C sixty five? I can't remember. I'm pretty sure you were a Spectrum a Spectrum man. So 
I think that's right. <laughs> oh yes, excellent. <laughs> Um, I thought you, I thought you were. So you'll be very familiar with this. You'll be very familiar. Now, Koresh, what we're actually trying to do, the objective of playing this game through the way we are, is a I want to capture a few little things like right on commander on screen, just as it pops up, which we believe is 256 kills. Uh, but I also, I, I'm on a mission to trigger the Spectrum missions. I'm a mission for missions. Okay. Um, what I want to do is I want to trigger the Spectrum missions of which we're not entirely sure how many there are in the game. Um, I've been looking through various sources and it seems there's either three or four missions on the Spectrum. Um, and one of those missions is is a supernova mission um, where we've got to rescue some inhabitants. I think we get some gemstones and a kind of, yeah, go well done commander sort of thing. Um, another one is definitely involved with a cloaking device. Now I don't believe Oh, there's another pirate. I don't believe the Spectrum version of the game has the Constrictor, so I think we have to attack an Asp at some point, and that gives us the cloaking device. Now, I have seen the cloaking device in operation on the Spectrum, but I've never played the mission to get it, so I'm quite interested in seeing that. Um, and then there, there's at least a mission, one mission, to do with the Thargoids, um, and it seems to involve attacking a space station somewhere along the line. There's an Asp. See? Asps are nasty. Um, so those those are the three missions we believe are there. Now I've been having a look on the internet and I've not found any any um, confirma a confirmation of these missions. Um, and there seems to be no online um, stream, video, or anything of the actual missions. Um, so I'm hoping to make a preserve for posterity, really, <laughs> by triggering these missions. Um, I want to capture them. Because I'm, record I'm, I'm recording this for my YouTube channel as well. Because um, obviously Twitch doesn't store the recordings forever. Um, uh, and I want to capture those missions. Um, uh, and, and what happens in them. And a few other things. And along the way we'll probably end up being elite as well. Uh, we're competent at the moment. So, I've got to get this. this Asp is actually giving me a hard time. I know I'm having to talk and fly. But even so. <laughs> oh, I'll come back. Diving and twirling. I suppose he doesn't really want to be killed, so I think that's probably fair enough. The problem with the scanner, of course, you can't zoom it in and out. So I think he's actually dodging and diving quite effectively here. And the Asp, actually, again, is another ship like the Sidewinder in the original. He's just turning, there's nothing I can do about it, and then we're going to have to go the other way. Um, the Asp and the Sidewinder are, are two of the worst ships. Um, the Anaconda could be quite bad as well, um, but both the Asp and the Sidewinder have a speed advantage. There's the, oh, no, it wasn't. Oh, it's, it's that. There's the uh, escape pod, so he's now a slave. And this looks, I think this was an innocent ship that's just wandered into view. Um, so we're going to take him out as well. <laughs> because we're playing, we're playing bad Drew today. Uh, I think that's a Cobra. We got missile lock. And incoming missile. Let's let it to he launches. He's launched three missiles, launched four missiles, and they're all toast. <laughs> there's the escape pod. And there's the end of the ship. Right. And there's the. Oh, there's another one. Gonna have to keep pillaging. I'm such a bad boy. Right, hang on a minute. Let me get let me get that. Oh, luxuries, that's nice. I'm not bothered about scooping up the alloys. I don't mind slaves. Slaves are slaves are relatively profitable, okay? Um, so I don't mind scooping up slaves. So let's go and get this other ship here. It looks like another cobra, yeah. Okay, wiped him out before he even got his shields up. <laughs> before he even figured out what was going on. Um Cool. Right, let's just scoop that up. Right, then we can head for the space station. Radioactives. Okay. Um, and now I can have a look at the chat again. <laughs> um, hello, 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 hello. Um, excellent. Right. Um, 07. A pain in the ass. That's exactly what they are. Hey, Specky, thanks for the heads up. That's really Oh, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for popping on, Crash. Uh, anytime I knew you wanted to catch up. Uh, I seem to recall some versions of the scanner zoom. Um, yeah, no, I, well, the Spectrum version doesn't. I don't think the original Elite had, had either. The Spectrum version um, was 
basically uh, it wasn't a port because the original BBC was a 6502 processor and the Spectrum uses a Z80A so they bear almost no resemblance to each other those two chips um, and uh, I've programmed for both of them you know in the past Cobra <laughs> oh it's a pirate Cobra that was good I got some money for it um, so what the um, the Taurus guys here did is they basically had a reference copy on the BBC and they were based their their spec was basically rewrite this game for the Spectrum and make it do everything the Elite version does as close as you can on the Spectrum. That's that was their brief. So um, um, and it's not identical at all uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but it's it's a it's a faithful reproduction on the Spectrum. Uh, it loses out to the BBC, I think, on frame rate and some of the other various bits and pieces like uh, the variety of ships, particularly against the BBC disc version. Um, but it wins on some immersion things like you know the Python thing that we were seeing. Um, um, quite often at the space station, and we're not seeing that now because we're using the docking series. But there was there were ships moving around the space station, which um, was less common on the BBC version. Um, and um, you know some of the other things. And the tourist drive was better done on the Spectrum version. Um, you know you've got an effect whereas, whereas the BBC version just jumped. So it, it's it's a good version of the game. It is a very good version of the game, um, and I think they could be justly proud of what they did. Right, let's sell our slaves. <laughs> Two slaves, there we go. Um, um, so just a little bit of casual piracy does keep the credits coming in, right? <laughs> um, so I think they only had the wireframe models in the Galaxy Generation code. Yeah, to keep that stuff the same. So um, that that's good. Um, and um, it, the music, there's no, no, I don't think there's any music on this version. All you have is very, very basic sound effects in, in this version. Um, so you may be thinking of something. Now, if I want to get up to TMV, I'm going to, which is the best route, um, I'm going to have to go across, actually. So let's get to Riz Rizala. That sounds like a fun place. What's there? Mainly agricultural. Um, I think we'll just keep hacking our way across space. Uh, right, I'll save it again. Always save. Always good to save. Um, no, no. Uh, because <laughs> we want enough money to keep this sort of level of cash up. Although we can always earn some by just going on the piracy route, but um, there we go. Rizala. That's not like a bad place to go. Um, used to play on the C64 with a keyboard over there. Okay, Yozarian 74. Now the Commodore 64 version was ported, was actually written for the C64 by um, David Brabe and, and Ian Bell. I understood, and a friend of mine, Daddy Hoggy, plays um, I played played it on the C64. Now I understand the C64 struggled a bit with Elite because of its it had a it had a version of the 6502 processor, but not actually the 6502 as I understand it. Um, a slightly altered version, um, and uh, it basically its main problem is the clock speed wasn't very high. So one the one the, pretty much the only advantage the Spectrum had was that its clock speed was 3.5 megahertz. And um, that was relatively quick at the time. And um, I believe the C64 is actually sub one. It's actually point point nine or something megahertz. Um, so which is which is pretty slow. Um, and I think the BBC was two megahertz, if my memory serves me right. Now you can't directly compare those megahertz because of the way the architectures of the computers work. But they give an indication. Um, the C64 was far better at any games that required sprites, right? Because it had hardware and it had sounds and things. So it could do much more faithful reproductions of classic arcade games like um, Defender and Pac-Man and all those kind of things. Um, but once things started getting into the wireframe world, it, you know, basically it was how fast can your computer do maths? That was, that was the limiting factor on these games. How fast could your computer do maths? And the Spectrum did have some advantages. You'll notice the planet there is a nice circle. It had some inbuilt routines for drawing circles and things like that, um, which, which were quite useful, which the other computers had to approximate. Um, and uh, oh, it's another ASP. We haven't encountered a ship with a... Um, Beam laser yet? I'm hoping the game gives us one of those at some point because that maybe uh, that might be a scale. Think about it. That might be something that's reserved for um, um, the higher ranks to kind of keep that interesting. Because 
we haven't seen one yet. I'm just going to stalk my way through these asteroids as well. Oh, miss. One thing I noticed actually there is that the when you fire the laser, notice it wobbles around a bit, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't recall that. Um, that must be a thing. Um, it's like you're it's not quite like a gimbal, is it? It just <laughs> seems to be randomly moving, shifting slightly. Um, I think that's maybe just to give the uh, game a little bit, maybe it looked a bit too static without that. And I'm not sure if that's representing four beams or it's sort of representing two, if you see what I mean. And it's drawing the outlines of the beams. Um, I don't know, what do you think? I mean, technically, you've only got one laser on the front of your ship because when you look at the Cobra, it's got a little pointy gun on the front, which lo at least it looks like a pointy gun, but that's not there in Elite Dangerous. So um, I always assumed that the ship had one laser on the front, which is how lots of the other games have implemented it, like at Elite. Um, but um, on the Spectrum, you get these two beams, or at least maybe four beams. <laughs> um, so I'm not entirely sure. All right, sell that. Is that, we got some. We got some slaves. Slaves are good, right? So we're still doing our life of crime. Get the fuel, and we're off. Uh, right. This is mainly agricultural. What have we got over here? Rich industrial. Okay. Well, that's good. And that one is rich agriculture. So this is a trade trip that's worth doing. Uh, so rich industrial. We are here, which is mainly agricultural. So we should be able to buy cheap liquor here. Liquor and wines are 30, that's pretty cheap. Let's do that. Uh, there we go. Let's buy the entire stash there. That'll do. Uh, I've got my fuel. Right, so save the game. Quick save, there we go. We're still competent. Um, so, um, yeah, I used to play Elite in the computer block at college lunchtime. This was back in 1988. I had my own copy of Elite on floppy. Yay, good stuff. <laughs> um, good old jitter and high, yeah, insulation to help the screen refresh. I don't know, maybe it was. Jetpack, yes, definitely remember Jetpack. We used to do a playthrough of Jetpack. Um, jetpack, no, no, Jetpack was different. Jet Set Willy is the one you're thinking about there, Man vs. Gaming, which was the sequel to Manic Miner. Um, <laughs> which is an entirely different subject, but we ought to go and look at that at some point. Uh, Jetpack, um, actually without the K, um, Commander Sinclair, Jetpack, it's just J-E-T-P-A-C, I think you'll find, or maybe P-A-K, I can't remember now. Um, but that was a great game. Um, Ultimate play of the game, really, really good. Um, so that was good. Uh, Favourite game on the Beeb was Elite, was Daredevil Dennis. Okay, don't know that one. Um, have I been drinking everything's gone blurry? No, that's just low resolution. Uh, Le Lunar Jetman, that was the sequel to Jetpack. That's right. So Manic Miner was first. Jetpack was first. The sequel to Manic Miner is Jet Set Willy. Jetpack had Lunar Jetman. Although Lunar Jetman I never got on with. Um, Alien, yes, there was Head Over Heels. That was a late version of the uh, isometric display, which was pioneered by Nightlaw, I believe. Uh, also by Ultimate Play the Game. So some great, some great early games. We should take a look at those at some point. Um, that would be really good. Right, and what was I doing? <laughs> See, you've got to stop interrupting me with, with, with nostalgia. <laughs> Head over heels. Yeah, I don't remember playing that one. That was probably getting a bit after my time because my spectrum sort of. I went to university in 1988. At which point my spectrum, kind of, that's that's the point at which my spectrum playing stopped really. So I had, a, I had three years I've worked out. It feels, of course, a bit longer because of course you're young. Um, so yeah, three years between um, sort of playing Elite, which presumably was Christmas 1985. I must have had it as a present. And, um, and, um, and going to university in 1988. So I had, oddly enough, I remember that period of my life being full of things <laughs> but it can only have been just slightly less than three years from the point I actually got a leak of my own and then went to university and stopped playing computer games in general because I was working at, at university and stuff and we did we did other things um, usually with you know usually girls and beer mostly <laughs> um, so so yeah the three years of my life from 85 to 88 were basically elite 
not doing great at my O levels and not doing brilliantly at my A levels <laughs> because of computer games. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's quite funny. But the good old days, right? The good old days. Um, all right, so have I got something on board? Yes, of course. My, my, my liquor. All right, so we've sold that, that's good. This is a rich industrial, so computers should be cheap here. 61, that's not bad, there's 55 tons, perfect. Let's get them. So trading is still the best way to make some money. So I'm gonna keep trading along here. Um, I'm going to Kravi, what's that? That's rich industrial, so that's no good to us. Uh, rich agricultural, wool, <laughs> that's just very funny. Horned birds. <laughs> Which, of course, didn't make us chuckle at all when we were 15, 16. Um, <laughs> although this planet is notable for the Rianchian edible warthog and the Rianchian spotted wolf. There we go. So, <laughs> happy sex gone straight there. <laughs> so, Rianchiat is probably quite a cool system to visit. Okay. <laughs> um, there we go. Have I played Tau Seti? Um, no, I haven't actually. No, you should point me at that. So that's good. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. This game does make me chuckle. But I, yeah, whether they left things in like that, uh, just because. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. Yeah, so Rianchian Warthog Bacon then. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I have to play Tau Set. I possibly have, actually. I may have forgotten. Um, first game that had a day night sign with full graphics. Okay, I'm going to check that out. That's quite a good recommendation. Right, save the game, save the game, save the game. Um, now the other thing on our nostalgia fest for this era, of course, was what was I, I kind of got to it with Star Wars, but then we got distracted by something else. Um, um, so Star Wars, I had seen Star Wars in it must have been seventy eight, okay. And Star Wars was, I remember queuing up to see Star. It was the first time I'd ever been to a film where there was a queue to get in. I, I wonder what was going on, and there'd been lots of hype about Star Wars on the telly and, and stuff on the radio and everything. Um, and um, I remember watching, you know, going, you know, my dad, my dad took me along because I was only eight, right? <laughs> um, and um, you know, it wasn't something that my sister and my dad wanted to see. But my mum wanted to see, and my dad, you know, wasn't really into space, but he kind of liked Star Trek a bit, um, and um, he liked, you know, American kind of action movies and James Bondy stuff. So um, he came along, most not really expecting to enjoy it. Um, but because I was utterly mad about space, so we, I had to go and see this this, this space film. Um, and so I went along to the cinema, and we queued, and that was a novel experience. I'd never queued at a cinema before. And uh, eventually we get in, and start the credits roll, and we get the music. And, um, and then I remember being utterly, utterly astonished. You know the opening scene of A New Hope, when the um, Tantive, Tantive 4, Tantive 5? Uh, Princess Leia ship goes past. Oh, my hull's full, isn't it? It's full of computers. <laughs> um, and you know the the cinema is reverberating with this ship going past. And I remember thinking, "Wow, look at that!" And there's lasers flying everywhere. Um, at, at the age of eight, okay, you've got you've, you've got to put yourself at the age of eight. And I'm seeing this spaceship fly past, and there's lasers flying, and things are exploding and stuff like that. And then, of course, then you think you've seen everything. You know, the ship has gone past. Um, <laughs> alien tentative. Denty four. I'm a sad nerd for knowing that. Well, we're nerds, nerds. I suspect, um, given that we're we're sitting here on a Saturday afternoon in the sunshine, alien, <laughs> watching some middle-aged guy play an 8-bit computer game. I suspect most of us are nerds, right? <laughs> um, but anyway, so you see the tentive tentive four go past, and then of course you see the star destroyer come past, um, and I just remember being totally blown away by watching this and thinking wow and I must have I kind of looked at my dad thinking you know I, you know for, for an eight-year-old into space seeing this on screen was just this was just astonishing and I was like completely agog um, and um, and then I looked across at my dad and he, he was sort of sitting there with his mouth hanging open <laughs> kind of going he was astonished by what he was um, what by what he was seeing and um, which was kind of cool for me because I never really, I mean, ah, it's not letting me dock here. That's a bit mean. All right, we're going to have to go on. Uh, we can just about make there, so let's go there. This is Sometimes the game's a bit mean. Uh, it's not letting us dock because we're bad. 
<laughs> oh, it's hard to base onto a new new location. Sometimes you have to you have to back off the killing a little bit to just um, let your rating drop a bit so you can actually dock uh, and carry on with your cargo run. Um, so yeah, so I, I remember seeing that and I just remember being uh, amazed. And I, I remember being amazed that my dad was amazed, if that makes sense. Um, and he had never seen anything. Yeah, he'd watched science fiction shows and knew how the special effects worked and stuff. And of course, the you know the industrial light and magic as they became um, effects were in the 70s. There was nothing like that. Uh, it was an astonishing thing to to see. Okay, um, and so that that was a big, big suddenly suddenly space was cool. And then there was the Death Star and the X wings and you know the Millennium Falcon and and you know. Han Solo blasting his way out of Mos Eisley and all that kind of thing, and then that's so space was suddenly cool again. <laughs> and in the real world, you know, the space shuttle was launching, so the Americans had got their space shuttle to work, and it, you know, at last we had a spaceship that went into space that actually kind of looked like a spaceship. It was a bit more Buck Rogers than the uh, the Apollo stuff, and um, you know, the the late seventies, early eighties were a very very cool time for space exploration. The Voyager probes went off, and we were getting pictures back of of Jupiter and Saturn and all these sort of things. The space shuttle was up there. We had Star Wars on the on the big screen. Um, and, um, you know, it was a very exciting time just in stuff that was coming through the television. Um, you know, all that sort of stuff was happening. So, yeah, there we go, Stephen. I just, the Voyager 1 and 2, you know, we were getting pictures back from deep space and, um, you know, incredible time. And I was into space and astronomy and stuff in a big way as a kid. And, you know, Star Wars was feeding my sort of adventure um, Star Trek was still on the television, of course, going where no man had gone before. Voyager 2 was out there, the space shuttle was out there. And then when I got home from a really boring day at school, because my my, my school years, the actual school bit of them, um, I mean, I, I, I did have some very good friends at school, but we were all in the same kind of category. We were, we were mid middlingly good academically, not, not outstanding. Um, and... Um, yeah, we all kind of hated school, really. <laughs> so, um, swapping rate, swapping cassettes, and swapping bootleg versions of computer software was what kept us going between lessons, basically. Um, but of course, when you could come home from school, um, having you know watched Star Wars and watched Star Trek and you know watched the space shuttle, what you would fire up in your spare time was this game. Okay, and so you could live out your fantasies, if you like, of being a you know. Han Solo and um, uh, blah, blah 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 in and the beauty was this was the first computer game that let you do that you know something close made you feel like you were sort of a bit special that you were a space pilot and you could go off and make a difference to the galaxy and that's why I think this game has stuck with so many of the 84 crowd for such a long time um, because it's yeah it was there at the time when all this other stuff was happening and um, that, that's what made it so compelling. <laughs> and then, of course, I think um, when did when did um, Empire Strikes Back come out? Was that eighty four or eighty six or somewhere thereabouts? Gonna get killed. Gonna get killed. Gonna get killed. Yes. There we go. Kill the pop. It's always a good thing to do. Right, come on. There we go. That's still on. I haven't quite got to the space station yet, but we're there. So, uh, 19, was it 1980? Was it really that early? Okay, 1980. So when did, um, was Return of the Jedi, was Return of the Jedi a bit later then? When was Return of the Jedi? Um, the Crate Mark II is the Millennium Falcon. It kind of is, isn't it? Yeah, 81. Okay, so 80, 81. Okay, so 83. Was it, I, I remember it being later than that. Interesting. Okay, you know, it's funny how your memory isn't quite, um, isn't quite what you think it is sometimes. You have to check things. So, um, so yes, yeah, so all that was happening, right? All that spacey stuff and um, adventure and you know things was happening about the time that Elite came out and became a thing for the teenagers to play. So, um, oh yes, yeah, I went to see it in the double bill. Okay, hello Sarah, good to see you as well. Thank you very much for popping in. This is this is us playing retro computer games, by the way. So, totally different thing <laughs> uh, to our normal writing, which we do on Mondays, of course. Right now, I've got to navigate my way a little bit carefully here. I think I've got to go around the top. Uh, and I'm actually still on the lookout for a place to sell my computers. Uh, rich agricultural. 
<laughs> this is a nice, nice place. Look, uh, Villette is a revolting dump. <laughs> um, yellow fat felines is what, what is, is the population. Um, now, um, so yeah, so anyway, so. <laughs> um, oh, I'm not doing too well. I feel ashamed, bro. Oh, what's the matter, Sarah? What's happened? Do tell us. Um, Harrison Ford did Raiders and Blade Runner while well, encasing. <laughs> yes, he did, didn't he? Um, so yeah, so yeah, so Harrison Ford, um, Carrie Fisher, and um, Mark Hamill, and all those lot. Okay, yeah, sort of heroes of those that era. Now, um, alongside this, at the same time as all this was happening, lots of really good TV came out of the states. Okay, and and also some bits in Europe and Japan, right? So. On the television at the same time as all this was happening was 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 stuff like Airwolf. Okay, now who remembers Airwolf? Um, oh yeah, and Blake Seven. We'll get to Blake Seven. Um, but who remembers Airwolf? Okay, um, where it was a. Um, <laughs> I remember watching it, thinking this was awesome. You know, there's like an attack helicopter that that, that was stored in the uh, stored in the volcano <laughs> in the middle of America, which seemed to be on. Um, but um, at least I think it was it was, it was a volcano, wasn't it? Was it sort of a cavern? Um, no, you're not playing your missile trick with me, Mr. Ass, but I know that one. Um, so um, so yeah, so it, it was a canyon uh, or something. Um, anyway, there was this, this this helicopter, right, and it went on secret missions, and it was actually sort of, I think Blue Thunder, which was another version, sort of came slightly before Airwolf, but um, Airwolf, Airwolf was the one I remember most, be mostly because the because the helicopter was cooler and it could it had, um, you know, it had um, sort of stealth modes and it had onboard computers that could hack things and <laughs> it had a turbo boost button, which was very 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 important in the eighties because anything that was cool. Um, anything that had pretensions to be cool, okay, had to have a turbo button. <laughs> Even some of the PCs, and, and, and Stephen Usher will probably explain what the turbo button did on the PC because I can't remember. Um, but a lot of PCs in the 80s um, had um, had turbo buttons, and I'm sure it was only because um, everything on TV had a turbo button as well. <laughs> it was a way to sell the computer to say, oh, it's got a turbo button, so it must be good, right? <laughs> <laughs> turbo boost. So everything, everything and anything had t had a turbo on it. <laughs> um, so if, yeah, Stephen, if if um, oh, so actually, Crash has jumped in. Ironically, the PC turbo buttons were there to slow them down for all the software. <laughs> so the turbo was on most of the time, but sometimes you had to switch the turbo off. <laughs> but having you know, having a oh, it's a it's a it's a third lance. Oh, it killed me. Oh no! What did it do? Did it ram me? I just died. <laughs> See, it's still dangerous. This game. I think it launched a missile at me. I have to watch that on the replay. I didn't actually see what happened. I think it launched a missile at me, and then I rammed it as well. And that was too much for my ship to cope. With. <laughs> I have to go back to my save. Ah, quick load. There we go. How far back do we do we save it? Not too far back. Um, oh, bounty hunters. <laughs> that's right. So much. That's why right, so much nostalgia distracted me. Um, oh dear. Uh, oh, so you. Uh, so Sarah, just uh, you know, your old story, and the reason I'm ashamed of the story was I haven't done it entirely. It's oh, it's hard work, Sarah, because you have to just sit down, ultimately, and bite the bullet and rewrite it. I've 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 been there many times. Yes, it's, it's it's not nice, but there's only I'm afraid there's only one way around it, is is plucking up the courage to go and fix it. So positive attitude for you, positive attitude. You can do it. Pop along to the Monday stream. That's going to be much more conducive to talking about writing because we're sort of retroing about eight -bit, eight bit computer games today. So um, <laughs> it's, there's going to be far more people who will be around who will understand that on Monday. So um, you know, have yourself a fantastic weekend. Um, take your mind off it is the best thing I can suggest and then get back onto it um, at some point in the future. Don't force it. Trying to force creativity and rewrites is, 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 a, is, is, is not a place to go, right? Um, so yeah, so turbo buttons. Um, um, so I don't, know, I don't know how that um, Ferdinand's killed me there. 
um, that was that was just rather mean. <laughs> so I think it missiled me, and then I rammed it. I think that's what happened, um, which was just unfortunate. Um, so <laughs> a PC button cut the speed. <laughs> um, so yeah, so there we the turbo button. So yeah, so turbo there was a turbo on Airwolf or a turbine boost or something like that. Um, there we go. I'm going to sneak into the space station. The moment that S comes on. Some fuel. I don't think I can sell my. You know, I was I was heading up this way, wasn't I? To Vel Villette was where we were. Let's not go there again. That that was a bad place. Actually, no, I want to go there because that's where I want to sell my stuff. So I do want to go there. Let's save the game. That's what I forgot to do. Um, so yeah, so in Airwolf you had this helicopter, um, and it could you know it could do stuff that helicopters can't do, right? So like flying upside down and. Um, which apparently is impossible. Um, yeah, Stephen. Yeah, you're right, Stephen. Um, Blue Thunder was first with stealth mode and um, hacking and things first, wasn't it? But um, Airwolf had missiles on it and stuff like that. And it and let's let's be frank. Airwolf had the better theme tune, didn't it? <laughs> um, Airwolf had the better theme tune. Uh, yeah, so Sarah, so this 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 stream today is about playing eight bit computers from the nineteen eighties. So it may be very bewildering for you, um, and um, we're reminiscing about stuff that <laughs> happened in the nineteen eighties. And I, don't, I have no idea how old you are, I'm afraid, but it, it's quite possible you weren't even born at this point. So apologies for the complete nostalgia fest that we're we're currently doing. Um, that's what this, that's what this Saturday stream is all about. Um, so, so yeah, so the, I mean, the, the Airwolf theme tune. I wish I could play it, of course, on stream, but of course that would just get it muted for me or a copyright breach or something. Um, so I can't play it, but I'm sure you can, it's all those of you who remember um, Airwolf, um, remember the theme tune, which was sort of a, a kind of offbeat sort of, um, uh, it wasn't, oddly enough, like most theme tunes, it wasn't in a 4-4 time, it was a, like in a 12-8. Um, which had this sort of like that. It was really good. I wish I could actually. I could probably play it on a keyboard here if I fired up. Hang on, I'm gonna just. I'll try that at the next space station. See if I can actually play. Because I can play some of these theme tunes, um, which is probably far better than me trying to hum it. Um, so we'll we'll have a we'll have a quick look at that. A true plays nostalgic eighties theme tunes. So um, so yeah so. Airwolf was brilliant. It was it was after Blue Thunder. Blue Thunder actually had quite a nice theme tune as well, and it was a film, wasn't it? Before it was a TV show, but I don't think it lasted very long. Um, Blue Thunder. Whereas Airwolf went on for a long time. It was m many seasons. Um, oh, so Western Links helicopters can loop the. I always thought that was a fundamental impossibility for helicopters. So that's that's interesting. I didn't know. Didn't know that. Um, so that no, that's cool. Um, but it was, you know, it. My dad. I remember my, <laughs> I remember my dad watching it with me once, and he, and he saw the boost thing come on, and he said, and then the helicopter went, and a, you know, in 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 the in the Airwolf law, right? The the helicopter could go through Mark One. It could fly faster than the speed of sound. <laughs> I remember my dad just sort of looking at this, going, "That's total nonsense. It can't do that." <laughs> in his in his gut, yeah, so helicopters. <laughs> The bloody rotors would fall off, or something like that. Uh, <laughs> and he wasn't impressed. He wasn't impressed. So he kind of he sort of he sort of trashed Airwolf a little bit for me. Um, he said, "Yeah, the helicopters can't do that." <laughs> um, right, hang on a minute. Now, while we're here, let's just see if <laughs> see if I can. Um, Sarah, thanks for popping in. Do take care of yourself and um, yeah, pop in on Monday for the writing stream and we'll catch up with you then. That would be awesome. Um, so yeah, so um, the cool thing right now, let me let me just see if this is going to work. This this may not work. Um, I'm just going to fire up. I've got a synth program. I've got a, I don't know if you've seen this. I've probably never shown it on screen. I've got a small Akai keyboard here, which is plugged into my computer. And I'm just going to move the keyboard out and see if I can play some of these theme tunes. <laughs> This, this is horribly, this is, yeah. oh, save, yes, save, save, save. <laughs> save. There we go, save. Uh, this is funny. Because I think, yeah, if I if I go over to YouTube and play the Airwolf theme, then, yeah, I'm going to get a copyright infringement. But, but, but my rendition of it on my home keyboard here is probably, 
<laughs> it's probably going to be so badly done. Uh, let's just see if this is this working. Um, let me see if I can arm it. I need to have a I need to have a track, a virtual instrument track. There we go. Right. Yes, I've got. <laughs> Got <laughs> music. Right now, I need to go and select. Hang on, let me show you the screen what I'm doing, just because you'll find this kindly amusing. Um, I've got I've got a program here, so let me just go. <laughs> I want sort of strings. There we are. I sort of want. A, there's a Dungeons and Dragons Lee. Is that one I want? Uh, somewhere in here. It's called. It's got a good name called Jump Higher. There we are. That's the one I want. Um, it's sort of very 80s sound. This one. Let's get rid of this audio track here. Don't need that one. Let's arm that one. There we go. That will do. <laughs> Let me just bump up the in-game sounds a bit. So, so Airwolf was sort of like this. Uh, uh, hang on. Uh, uh, I'm just trying to remember how it goes. Do do I'm going to do that again because I enjoyed doing that. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear, I might keep that running for a bit. Right, so that was... <laughs> that was my rendition of Evil. Um, so that's... <laughs> We'll, we'll try I, I, and so anyway so that, <laughs> it does sound like speaking music you're quite right um so um so that was that was another thing that was on too so that had that had missiles and lasers and turbo boost buttons and and um um and then there's Bornine, of course he was he was awesome wasn't he um, um oh and, and i think i can do the blue the blue thunder theme as well let me just i think the blue thunder one goes like this <laughs> That's enough of that for the moment. <laughs> On with the lead. <laughs> um, well, I can do, actually I can do, while I'm here, I can do the, the Frontier Elite 2 theme, which is, um, but the problem is, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but the keyboard isn't very big. It's like only two octaves. <laughs> um, uh, I think that's... Uh, Because I've run out of keys. <laughs> That's it. Don't like that anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> the intro of the law stream must. Well, oddly enough, it has got a little bit of it. I did. I don't know if you noticed on the last law stream. I put a little video at the beginning, um, and um, it's got it's got a little overture to the Blue Danube, which of course was the music that was in the Commodore 64 version, and a little little vignette to the Front Relic 2 theme. So <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> that was there Wolf and Blue Thunder, and we had Star Wars. Star Wars, I could do. Star Wars is easy. Um, oops. Uh, Etc. 
chip tray. <laughs> um, but the. Um, Anyway, over the lead. <laughs> I'm going to be playing theme tunes all afternoon. Um, but that was that was some of the cool stuff that <laughs> Disney's not watching. I'll be taking off. <laughs> um, so, um, but yeah, so those are the sort of shows that were on there. Airwolf, Blue Thunder, um, Knight Rider, of course, with Kit, uh, a talking car with a turbo button. Um, so all that stuff was was happening. Um, um, have I got, I've got my car, I haven't sold my cargo, let's do that. There we go. Um, that's nice. Now we are, where are we? We are in a poor, rich agricultural, so we're heading to a, actually we can head up here, looking at it. Yeah, let's go there, where's that? Going to a rich industrial, so we want luxuries here, I think. Um, liquor and wines are good. No, liquor and wines, there we go. 20, yeah, perfect. Let's get our liquor, take that with us. 35 tons of top quality Lystian evil juice or something. <laughs> save the game, save the game. Good good call. Um, so yeah, so those are the... Um, oh, Battlestar Galactica, right? <laughs> Buck Rogers in the 25th century. Um, yeah, what was that? How did that one go? Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. That one, hang on. I, I think I can do that. I think I can do it. <laughs> Um, um, and Galactica, oh, Battles I do like Battles of that, that one I can do. Um. Very militaristic, wasn't it? Bum, 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 bum. Yes, very good. <laughs> kind of get the blood stirring. Let's go and kill the Cylons. Um, right, we're very, very behind on playing the game at the moment. <laughs> but it's nostalgia. It's all, it's all part of the 80s, okay? It's all part of the 80s. It's all good fun. <laughs> um, so this is the stuff that's in the background. I remember having the theme tune to Airwolf playing in my headsets, but, you know, in my yeah, earphones as they were then. And my Walkman while I was playing Elite. <laughs> because it was the right sort of music. Um, oh, X-Bomber! Oh, now you've, now you've got me started. Now I do know the X-Bomber theme. Let me, do, <laughs> we'll do that in a minute. Starfleet, right? Um, oh, looks, I've got multiple baddies here. What have I got here? Now I've actually got three of them. Look at that. That's not very common. So three pirates are attempting to take me down for my, for my uh, cargo of liquor. So this is, the game's slowly ramping itself up. So I've got a bit of a challenge, right? Um, so two sidewinders and what probably is a crate, I'm guessing. Yep. Let's take the crate out easy. So that's the easy one. And let's deal with the... Where did they go? Deal with the sidewinders. So it's it's a shame in some ways. Elite itself. The one the one thing it... Oh, that's us go. <laughs> the one thing it really is missing, actually, is a theme tune. <laughs> it kind of deserves one. Um, I think after all that... Uh, Everything else that was going on, because everything else had a, a, a very cool. There's the sidewinder out maneuvering me. There we go. Um, he came out of that dive exactly the wrong time, my friend. There we go. Um, let's just bank around there. Oh, another ship. Yeah. That 
that's the cargo cast. So this is the only problem, of course, on the Spectrum version is you can't distinguish what's out there. <laughs> oh, there it is. Uh, let's get that sidewinder. <laughs> Boom. Right, so I think that's another ship. Let's just get rid of that. Looks like a python. Maybe the long. Um, so there we go. So yeah, so that was that was the thing. So um, there were lots of really good TV shows, is what <laughs> I was trying to say. Um, Airwolf, um, Street Hawk was later on. Uh, that wasn't such a good show. Uh, it, it it kind of took the turbo stuff to like a rather silly extreme with like a, a turbo bike that could do two hundred. Well, I don't know how fast it was actually. <laughs> Um, but Starfleet, now Starfleet, um, Starfleet is worth a call actually because A, it's got a theme tune that um, Brian May and Eddie Van Halen did a cover of. Did you know that? Um, so it's worth looking, I've got it downstairs as an LP. Um, Eddie Van Halen and Brian May uh, produced an LP length um, cover version of the Starfleet X Bomber theme, which is worth seeking out. Because um, <laughs> uh, it's very, very cool. And it's a great theme song anyway. Um, you know, send a message out across the sky. Um, alien raid. Oh, this is the, this, this the Verdilance again. He's come to get me. <laughs> this is the guy who got me last time. Oh, I think he must have launched two missiles at me. That was just low. So I've got him this time. So he's come to get me again. I'm, I'm, this, uh, obviously, there are no persistent NPCs, but it's personal. This is the same guy. So this time he's going down. You killed my alter ego. Um, that triangle on the bottom of the ship, by the way, is arguably his fuel scoop. Got him. Yes. So that's that's payback for earlier on. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so Barry Hercules and space pilot John Lee. What was the, um, there was Captain, there was, what was the, what was the, who was the pilot? Um, can't remember now. Space pilot John Lee, Barry Hercules. I'm Barry Hercules, Doug. <laughs> I remember that. Um, oh, Shiro Hagen. That's right. That's right. And um, yeah, Shiro, Shiro, Shiro Hagen. That's right. And who is the who is the, who is the doc, doctor? Doctor something. Um, uh, Commander Makar, oh yes, Commander Makar with the eye patch. Yeah, she was the first time we had a proper female baddie, actually, um, which I always liked. I've always liked um, uh, Ben. That's right, Ben. Um, um, <laughs> um, let's sell our liquor. There we go. Oh, we've almost got ten thousand. That's really good. Um, let's buy some fuel. We're almost at Tianve, I think, which is which is good. Yes, yeah, we're we're getting there. Right, awesome. So we are now in a rich industrial system. Which is feudal, which explains why we got attacked so much. Um, that should mean the computers are relatively cheap. Well, they're not actually. Hmm, that's a bit rubbish. Um, it's worth having there. I think it's really cheap actually. It's all really expensive here. <laughs> Funny, good place to sell. Right, let's just buy some fuel and go on in that case. We'll do that in a moment. Um, Tian Rebi, that's a system I know. We're almost in my home space. This is this is good. Um, Alaza and Tian Rebi, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm I'm almost home. This is good. <laughs> I've been on these space. Um, by your divine guidance, this <laughs> poor Commander Makara had the worst set of servants, didn't she? <laughs> that little insect. What was the guy's name? The 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 sort of underling under Commander Makara. She was all she was always. This will be the end of the Federation. We will attack. Attack. What was the guy's name? Um, <laughs> Orion. That's right. <laughs> uh, right. Every, yeah, while we're here, let's see if I can play the stuff. That was um, you know, send a message out across the sky, wasn't it? <laughs> Something like that, anyway. 
Uh, it was, uh, it's got a minor chord there. Something like that, anyway. <laughs> I can't, I can't play that one very well. I haven't got enough keys. I only use this little keyboard. I don't normally use it played. I've never used it. this. Is the first time I've ever played live with it. Um, <laughs> I usually use it just for entering melodies in for things. Um, but it's something like that, anyway. Um, send a message out across. It needs a bit more oomph to it, of course. But there we go. That was them. Um, that was that was that was a great show. And then there was Blake Seven, of course, which was the British version. British version. Now the Blake Seven special effects were disastrous, right? But the storytelling was actually quite good, um, and the Blake Seven theme tune was really hard to play. Um, and it's something like this. Um. <laughs> Those things, right? So Blake Seven and the Liberator, the probably the coolest spaceship that's ever been ever ever been designed. It was that was an amazing piece of design. <laughs> Three pods and and yeah, um, and they they invented a quite a cool speed mechanism, speed standard by five and things like this, which of course meant nothing, but <laughs> sounded good. Um, so lots of lots of cool stuff in there. I enjoyed that. So yeah, so Airwolf, um, um, Blue Thunder, Street Hawk, Knight Rider were all kind of American shows. Um, Blake Seven was British. Um, we had um, Starfleet was sort of a, a, a Japanese import, was it? Um, a team. Dun, dun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You've started me now. <laughs> Space 1999. Yeah, there, there was another one. That was good. That was um, that was the from the things and Thunderbirds, of course. So Space 99 was. No, no, it's just really difficult. This one. Something like that, anyway. And uh, Thunderbirds, well, Thunderbirds was five, four, or three, two, one, was it? And that was. Dun, 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 dun. I don't know if I can play that one. Dun, 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 dun. I don't even know what that's I'm going to have to rehearse that for next week. <laughs> but, but we have there's two shows that we haven't even got to yet uh, that were my absolute uh, favourite. Well, there are three, actually, that were absolute favourites of the year. Now they, and they were all cartoons. Okay, so I was still young, right? I was still 14 when all this is happening. And so the cartoons of those eras. So someone's already mentioned Auto Man, which was quite good. But um, and but the, my fa my three absolute favourite ones were uh, Battle of the Planets. Someone's just Stephen Hodge is just coming. Battle of the Planets, which has gotten the most amazing intro. <laughs> It talks about alien galaxies uh, watching warning against surprise attack from alien galaxies from beyond space. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> so yeah, all Jerry Anderson stuff there um, for, for the earlier stuff. But yeah, so Battle of the Planets was very, very cool. Um, and um, what was that theme? I don't even I can't remember how the theme tune goes to that. Uh, do -do 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 -do. It, you know, it was all very kind of 80s orchestral stuff. So Battle of the Planets was really, really good. Ulysses 31. Now, Ulysses 31 is the 
is the absolute best in my opinion. Um, Gatcha Man, that's right, it was the original Battle of the Planets, that's right, Gatcha Man was even better. Um, but Battle of the Planets was the American change of the Japanese show, that's quite great. Terror Hawks wasn't bad. Terror Hawks was again. I watched Terror Hawks again, it wasn't so great on the reruns, whereas I thought Starfleet X Bomber actually still worked. I thought Starfleet was really, really good. But Ulysses 31, I've rewatched that relatively recently, and that is still awesome. I think I can play that. Um, so it's just sort of like this. Uh, that's D. I remember. Um. Oh, that's right, it goes down there. Hang on, I'll, I'll start that again. Onwards from there, right? So that was that was good. I love that one. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed Ulysses was brilliant because it was space, right? It was spaceships. It was Greek legend because it was kind of the retelling of the Odysseus Homer story. So it was full of actually quite good educational stuff. Um, yeah, because and it stayed very true to the original Homer's Odyssey, right? Um, but Ulysses had a really good theme tune. It had a, you know, Ulysses was this sort of space hero with a guy, and he had a, he had a lightsabery sword, which was also a gun. So he could turn it into a sword. It would, it would, you know, where's my hand? There we go. Um, it would, it would lightsaber up there, right? It would also be a gun, so you could, you could shoot people. But it, if you turned it sideways, it was also a shield. It was, it was just really, really well thought through. Um, so. So it had all the, you know, and so Ulysses would go off and defeat the gods, but it was spaceships and Greek legends and gods and awesome, awesome music. It had some fantastic guitar works. If you ever listen to Ulysses, it's got some brilliant, brilliant music in there. And um, so that was that was an amazing show. Twenty six episodes, I think it is. And Ulysses, you know, has to go. And, you know, he's basically cursed. He can't find his way back home. He has to travel through the universe of Olympus, which is a very weird place. Um, in his spaceship, which is has all sorts of amazing powers. The spaceship itself is very very cool, um, and um, and some really nice touches and some fantastic music. You probably, you know, those of you who know Ulysses, that one remember the do 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 that 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 guitar riff is brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, the spaceship was built around an eye and it had you know, powers and the ship had a computer voice and a huge bridge and, you know, it was very, very well thought through. It was, it was a brilliant, <laughs> and of course, an annoying robot called No-No. Uh, but it had Telemachus, who was the son, who wasn't too annoying, um, and a young girl called, um, oh God, what was the little space alien girl called? Um, she, she's blue with a little telepathic power thing what was her name someone must know <laughs> what was the what was the blue alien girl called denise <laughs> wasn't denise <laughs> what was her name um telemachus and oh i should know come on someone someone on the chat must know who she was karen, karen. <laughs> she was an alien she's gonna have an alien name <laughs> Mary. nobody can remember the girl <laughs> what, what was her name somebody must be able to um, come on, come on, chat. You got to help me out here. What was her name? <laughs> she was blue. She had, she had. It was on the French. It was called Denise, was it? <sighs> Yumi, Yumi. There we go. <laughs> Yumi, that's right. Yumi and Telemachus. Yay! Ah, <laughs> uh, dear, brilliant. I should really keep playing this game. We've got to get to TN, babe. Yeah, I've got, I've got, we've got, we've got, we've got 25 minutes. We'll make it, we'll make it. Then we'll go and battle some Starglades. So Yumi and Telemachus. All right, so we had the space from Zotra. That's right. Yes, from Zotra. So, and Zotra was another planet. And they had, um, so Yumi was the space alien girl who, she had telepathic power. She actually 
was quite useful in some of the um, episodes because you could sort of sense Dana. She's a bit sort of like early Diana Troy, really, <laughs> but very young. Uh, I don't know how old she was supposed to be. She looked about sort of six. Um, uh, so yeah, so she was. <laughs> she was there. Um, and um, yeah, so they went on some amazing adventures, and the artwork and the the vibe of that show was absolutely brilliant. You had these, you know, these ephemeral gods and traps being set, and things that Ulysses had to figure out. It was it was fabulous, really really good. Um, so um, so that was that was a great show. The other one that I I remember with great fondness was um, Mysterious of Cities of Gold. So I think you really mentioned it. Uh, that was a brilliant show. Uh, I'm actually re-watching that at the moment. Um, oddly, <laughs> oddly enough, on Saturdays, I have a spot during the day where I do the ironing. <laughs> but I actually rather enjoy it because it's basically my chance, depending on how much ironing there is, to watch um, an episode of... Um, I don't think that was an asteroid. <laughs> I think I just incinerated an anaconda. Um, yeah, I did. Oops. <laughs> um... So yeah, so I get to watch a, an episode of Mysterious of Cities of Gold, or two episodes of Mysterious Cities of Gold, when I am um, when I'm doing the ironing, um, which 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 is just which is just quite nice actually. So quite relaxing. Mysterious Cities of Gold. Um, so that was that, was, um, and that one had the thing I liked about that one is it had sort of weird science fiction, Aztec -y, ancient stuff all kind of mixed up. It was sort of set in the 16th century, I think. Um, and you know, I had a really funny theme tune, doo -doo 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 -doo, sort of theme tune. It was a bit, bit, a bit weaker than some of the others, but it was very memorable. Um, and uh, but yeah, it had flying, kind of remote-controlled, um, massive condors and solar-powered ships and things like that. It was, it was full of all sorts of very imaginative stuff. And actually, um, for those of you who, who followed me, my writing stuff my Shaywood saga, which, which I've literally just finished actually, the fourth one's now out, um, were very much inspired by that sort of mysterious cities of gold vibe. <laughs> so if you like that sort of thing in a slightly more modern context, then I can recommend those books because that's that's sort of the vibe I was aiming for, is a sort of mysterious cities of gold type um, exercise of discovery of weird and wonderful ancient tech. Uh, so that was that was good. Um, like that show. Battle of the Planets, yeah, we talked about that. That was good. Oh, and Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. It's a Dungeons and Dragons ride. I am Venger, and he is Dungeon Master. <laughs> uh, brilliant stuff. So, and I remember those really fun. Right, we are there. Look, there it is. T no, TMV must be that one. Yay, we've got to TMV. Right, so that's 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 home. We're we're at home. <laughs> so yeah, Dungeons and Dragons, and they didn't get home in this stuff. The idea was that um, in Dungeons and Dragons, the idea was that these four kids, I think it was four kids, um, went on a Dungeons and Dragons ride in a theme park and accidentally got teleported through the magic portals and stuff into the actual Dungeons and Dragons world and had to find their way back. But they never found their way back in the um, in in the cartoon, which they never kind of really ended it. Um, and oddly enough, <laughs> I think it was Peugeot. Or, or car, some car company, um, and it wasn't distributed in the UK directly, but you can find it on YouTube. There's a wonderful, wonderful Dungeons and Dragons inspired advert um, where basically they, <laughs> and it's done done in proper decent CGI, right? They spent a lot of money on it. It's really, actually, really, really good. Other than that, the, <laughs> the way they get home is they they're all fighting Venger in the background, and you know there's lights and there's things, and she's using her cloaking hoods and the guy's whacking his things and the, and the unicorn is there and all that sort of stuff and they clamber in I think it's a Peugeot I might be wrong but they all get into this Peugeot MPV and drive through this magic portal and that's how they get home <laughs> so it's quite fun but it's worth digging that out it's on YouTube somewhere um, it wasn't released in the UK but it's, it's it's been released worldwide in some places it's actually really really well done other than that it's a car advert and it just makes you look at it and go why can't they make that <laughs> That would be really, really good. Um, so, um, so yeah, that's 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 definitely worth doing. So, Dungeons and Dragons was really good. Um, Dungeons and Dragons Spectrum game. I haven't played that. Oh, I have to look that one up. Um, yeah. So, Stephen Ash is quite right. The most of the most of those were played in the sort of four thirty to five thirty slot. So, I remember rushing home from school. I would get home from school about ten past four. Um, 
and um, it would it you know, TV was good, right? You had, I think Ulysses was on Thursdays and Dungeons and Dragons was on Wednesdays and stuff like that. You know, it was it was good. There we are, hyperspace TM. I am home. I'm home on my eight bit version of the game. <laughs> I haven't been here. Um, God, for probably about thirty five years. <laughs> so let's go to the TMV system. This is this is how I'm going to be good here because this is my home planet. Um, I'm going to wipe the pirates out of my home system. Um, so yeah, so all of those shows are very very much 80s, right? Very much 80s stuff. And um, but fondly remember that, and they're, most of them are still really good today. Uh, Godzilla, yes, I do remember Godzilla. That was with Godzuki. Up from the depths, 30 stories high. <laughs> ah, good old days. But it was all, oddly enough, when I look back at it now, it felt like it, you know, those days were sort of going on forever, but um, it it must have been really only a period from about 84, 85 on to 88. Um, that were, this was good. Then I went off to university and I, I stopped watching television by that point. I don't think I had a television at university. Um, so th three, there we go. There was a <laughs> Godzuki, that's right, yeah. <laughs> uh, dear, brilliant. Um, so, oh, and Thundercats, yes. Thundercats, Thundercats, ho! <laughs> Tell the baddies what's going on. I'm just getting my sword ready. <laughs> the Thunder, Thundercats. Yeah, the original series of that was really good. Thundercats are on the loose. Thundercats are loose. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, Thundercats was one of the slightly later ones. I remember watching that um, later on. It was, I was beginning, I think, at that point to outgrow them. But I think Thundercats was one of the last ones that I, uh, I, <laughs> Cracker Jacks. Let's go on the Ooh, I can crush a grape. <laughs> I can jump off a doll's house. Yeah, I remember all that. That was that was appalling stuff. Um, I don't think I enjoyed those shows much, but the cartoons, I think the cartoons I loved. Uh, so yeah, so Ulysses, Mysterious Cities of Gold, Dungeons and Dragons, Battle of the Planets, all fabulous stuff, all fabulous stuff. Ulysses, do, 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 do. brilliant music. <laughs> there we go, we are at the TMV system, yes, we've made it. Look at that, we're 20 minutes to spend. We can go from, we can go from Tharga, Thargoid, Thargoid Killing Spree, and see if we can ramp up our um, stuff, which is going to be good. Right, we've got, we got one ton of food <laughs> we've got in the cargo hold. Um, right, so save that, because that's that's where we are. Now, there's one really nice thing about this. This this The reason I chose this system, partly I like the name, but partly because, look at this, it's right really, 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 really close next door to the Anlay system. In fact, it's only 0.8 light years away, um, which means that you can do the Thargoid hyperdiction thing um, on the spectrum without using too much fuel which is quite good um, transformers and go watch yeah so that was a bit late for I, I've, I've, I've grown up and gone a bit sniffy by this point <laughs> so I'm off to university in 1988 so I started losing track of some of the cartoons I think so after about 87 88 I, I think I stopped watching them um, and so it's a very very compressed point in my memory I don't remember much grabbing me um, TV and film wise whilst I was at university which was between 88 and 91 and then after that I went straight into my first job so it really didn't surface until about 95 because um, I was just you know you know I was at the junior as a job and you you know you had to do everything um, and, and learn stuff so you know um, yeah so after after 88 I tend to I've tend to, tend to, to have lost track of some of the stuff um, but anyway right I've saved that haven't I so Let's let's do some thargoidy stuff. Let's go and let's go and tackle some thargoids. Because what I'd like to do is have a full hold of um, um, alien. <laughs> so we can do this. Um, uh, if, and if Crash is still on, he he'll, he'll know about this. But um, we can stop the game. There, press F, and we get a funny beep, and then we start the game again. Um, and then we've effectively jammed the hyperspace mechanism by doing this. So if I hyperspace to Anli now, it will misjump into Thargoid space. Which is basically how you did it on the And again, that was an undocumented feature, so how people found that out, I'd have no idea. But we should be in Thargoid space. 
space here. There we go, we've got three of them. So let's take them out. Look at the frame rate. No sound voice, right? Let's get that. Here come the Thargons. That Thargoid's got out of the way. Oh, that's still knack your energy. Right, let's get after this one. I don't want to get too badly hit. Right. There's only one Thargoid mothership left. Although the Thargoids will fire at me, they won't respond the moment this one's dead. So the target is basically get rid of this one. The Thargoids on the Spectrum version are a little bit odd. They always fly sideways. See what I mean? You very rarely encounter them with their bottoms facing you. <laughs> that makes sense. He's still launching us. Ships. There we are. Right. Now, the nice thing here is all of these little ships are now dead in the water and I can pick them up. The Thargons. There we go. And I get alien items. Nice. And I have quite a few here. I think those other two are alloys, which I'm not really interested in. Um, but the alien items I am. Here we go, I vanquished the Thargoids live on stream again, which is a good thing to have done. Yes, I think those two are just, I think those two are just alloys. Pretty sure they are. Don't really want to waste my cargo space on them. <laughs> Do I know Captain Future? Was that popular in the UK? I don't know that one, no. There's a bunch of shows that never made it over here. Um, so, um, um, yeah, I think this is just an alloy, so I'm not really interested in an alloy, no. Right, so let's just, oddly enough, it thinks I'm in space station, I can't use the thing. Right, now, I think, now that everything's recharged, if I go back to, lock it onto Anlay, it still thinks, oddly enough, it still thinks I'm in the TMV system, but I'm not, because I have the space first, but I can do this again, and because I've got the F switched on, it should misjump again, I think. Yeah, so I can effectively at this point, now that I've got a decent ship, I can effectively thar farm the Thargoids for parts. Um, and, and, and they're quite lucrative, right? 50 credits a kill for each ship. Oh, yes, I shot the everything onto the ship out. And those alien items are worth quite a bit as well. So let's get after this last one. So I killed two there, and it's good for the it's good for the uh, the uh, the rating as well. Of course. So it's kind of win-win basically. So that's this is the nice thing about the TN system is that you don't waste a lot of hyperspace fuel. There we go, and then wipe the Thargoids out again. Um, and then I pick up these things, and I'll just keep an eye on. It's got about ten minutes left, so I'll do I'll do a few more of these and pick up as many of these as I can and then go back and sell them. Um, because they're relatively lucrative, these things as well. So you can get 50 credits for each um, Thargoid thong, you kill. And I think you get about 30 or 40 credits for each one of these little chappies. So they're, they're not bad. Okay, it's quite a, it's, it's high risk because those Thargoids can still overwhelm you even when your ship is as good as mine is now. Um, but even given that limitation, uh, I think that's just a, yeah, it's just a piece of debris. I don't really want that that one. I've got a choice here because if I chase one, the other one's going to be out of range. Pretty sure that's not a Thargon there. That's a piece of debris. Let's just check this last one out. This one might be a Thargon down here. Um, so, um, but, so yeah, is it an exploit? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> it's kind of not an exploit, but um, it is um, it's, a, it's a way of making money at this point and upping, upping your rating quite quickly. So let's just check this one out. That's probably a 
piece of alloy as well, but it might be a Thargoid. Let's find out. Uh, poor Thargoid's just minding their own business and Drew pops in. Yeah, it's just a... Yeah, so again, we reset for hyperspace. So I can keep doing this for a while, right? Because I got this is this is a this is a nice little system. It's probably a debug switch. You're quite right, Stephen. It's probably a debug switch, but it's <laughs> basically every time now. Um, oh, well, I've got four now. That's higher odds than normal. Oh, look at that frame rate. <laughs> Fifty credits for that one. Let's get this one. You do have to take them out fairly fast. I don't want to do that. You get five credits for shooting the targons, but there we go, I've got two of them. Because um, they can overwhelm you quite quickly if you don't get, certainly if you don't get one of those ones on the initial screen dead by the time they're moving away, you're in trouble. Because they're, they're, you know, I'm hitting them hard with a military laser. They are fairly tough ships, as you would expect. Um, now the space is full of debris. It's actually quite hard to figure out which ones. There he is. And they will fight back, unsurprisingly. So yeah, Thargoid's mind in their business, and boom, there we go. <laughs> I am. I am now an elite god. It says pride coming in before the fall. <laughs> I think that one is alloys. So I'm not really interested in zap that. It's the uh, it's the Thargons I want. Here's another little bug actually. We think um, we've we've done Stephen is that um, we think the. Um, we think the S stays on based on where you hyperspaced out from. It doesn't get reset, so it thinks you're in space station space, which means you can't um, you can't use the jump drive. Not that there's anywhere to go, um, but um, you, you, and you obviously can't dock. But you can't you can't use the tourist drive either because it's jammed because the S is in the bottom corner of the screen. Uh, oh, it's only alloys. That's boring. Right. So uh, how are we do for time? We've got, we've got let's, let's do at least one more. Thargoid farming. <laughs> but they get overwhelmed and die, okay? <laughs> uh, but this was a uh, this was quite a way to get a decent amount of credits relatively quickly at this stage in the game. Um, they, they hit me quite hard though. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I knew I should have saved that. Ah, classic, you can still die! You can still die! Oh, I admit. It's a problem. Where the, where's my load? Oh, we're, we're home. Never mind. <laughs> I think I might leave it there. Too greedy. Too, quite right. Too greedy. So you can still die. Okay, this is what, what's quite good about the game is it's, it's still dangerous. So I shall have to leave it there. We are in the TNV system, <laughs> which was my home on the original original Elite. Okay. Um, um, and it's reasonably noted for its inhabitants' exceptional loathing of food blenders and zero-g cricket. Um, I haven't got a right on commander yet. We don't know quite how far up this list we've got. We're still competent. We're still waiting for that right, first right on commander. We haven't had it yet. Uh, it comes at 256 kills, so we're somewhere between 128 and 256. But we did get distracted a little bit this week by some 80s nostalgia in the form of various theme tunes, which I've done very, very bad renditions of. Um, Oh, I did, did I? It appeared, oh, I didn't see it. Okay, so actually, ah, oh, so it's actually on the stream. I did get a right on Commander. I didn't even see it. Ah, okay, well, that's good because this save is only a few few kills before that. So that means that next week we should capture it kind of properly. But I'll go back and look at that. I didn't even see it. Okay, so um, just as I died, right on Commander. Oh, you did. <laughs> Okay, so that's that means we were at two fifty six kills then. So we were halfway to dangerous almost at this point in time. So that's that's really good. So we'll we'll get that properly on screen next week. And I'll, uh, Drew reacts. What will happen then? <laughs> I didn't spot it. <laughs> uh, brilliant. I'm distracted by all the keyboard playing. Um, so um, there we go. Uh, Thargoids have no respect. Yeah, they've 
just being sarcastic just seconds before I blew up. Ah, fantastic. So it's, um, how many Thargoids did I kill? So it must have been about three, three, four, um, probably about maybe 14 kills. That means I must be only about, at this save that I've just saved at, must be only about 14 kills away from 256. So we, and that would be useful for us to know because we can probably count up from there and see how we're doing. So we're close to 256 kills. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, so, there, and so, so I obviously died. So I think it's time for the Empire theme tune, which is no, no, mm. no, it's down there. <laughs> we'll end there. <laughs> it's almost like it's on a Star Wars note. Um, so. Um, <laughs> Thank you for your company today. Really do appreciate it. That's been great fun. Thank you for the putting up with my, <laughs> with my. <laughs> oh, you've clipped it, have you? Fantastic. Oh, thank you. That's brilliant. Um, and then I died. Um, so we'll do that. We'll get that again next week, and then we'll have a bit more retro '80s reminiscing, and I'll see if I can come up with some better theme tunes. But hopefully they were they were so bad that they won't get pinched by the copyright thing on Twitch. <laughs> Um, that was brilliant. So anyway, you guys have a fantastic weekend. Um, thank you very much for your company. Really appreciate it as always. Um, back on Monday for my uh, writing stuff. Uh, back on Thursday for uh, the Elite Dangerous Law Tour, where we're going to talk about Raxler, uh, which has been an oft quoted thing and oft uh, oft requested thing. So we we'll talk a bit about Raxler on Thursday. Friday I'll do a bit of Stellaris, and then we'll be back next week for um, more more shenanigans in Elite Dangerous. And we'll see if we can get that right on Commander uh, on the stream properly, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and then go off and quest the missions again so a bit more hyperspace and all that kind of good stuff so we've we've traveled a long way look we're, we're up there now so um we've come we've come a long way we have traversed chart one we've done chart one justice i think uh it's time for chart two and some galactic hyperspacing so that's that's for next week anyway you guys look after yourselves right on commanders 07 and uh, i will see you all um see you all online soon take care of yourselves take care now bye-bye <laughs>